Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last episode, we covered adding a little bit of uh, basic sword animation to our character for when he's walking around through our world, which is absolutely fine, that's what we want. Uh, but at the moment, all that we're doing, we're, when, we're hit, when our sword hits the enemies, it instantly kills them, and when the enemies hit us, it instantly kills us. Which isn't really very interesting, it's not something we want to have... Uh, for the whole game. It would make the game very hard if any time you got touched by anything you were immediately dead. So what we're going to do is add a health system to the game so that if we have say 100 health or 100 HP as is normally called in RPG games um, our enemies say here can do like 10 damage every time and it'll hurt us and it'll be absolutely fine. So what we want to do is uh, yeah like I said just create a basic little health system and we also want it to be uh, set up so that in the future when we start adding a leveling system to the game and other stats and stuff like that that we'll be able to increase our HP so we want to make it nice and simple so that it can be open for doing that uh, and the way we're going to do that is uh, by creating a new script uh, which we're going to attach to the player and we're going to do the exact same stuff of keeping it active the whole way and stuff like that uh, which will automatically happen because it'll be attached to the player so that'll be fine but uh, so yeah what we're going to do is create this simple little health system and obviously to start creating a health system we need to create a new script. So we're going to go create C sharp script and we will call it our player health manager. So we'll open this up in mono develop. Um, there we go, perfect. Okay, so we've got our health manager here and obviously we're going to need some basic things that we need to know. We'll need to know what the player's maximum health can be and as I said in the future that will be uh, integrated with whatever leveling up system we use. Um, but for now we'll just set like a, a basic default value uh, and we also need to keep track of what uh, health the player currently has. So to do that we're going to use two int uh, values. So we're going to say public int uh, player max health and stick our semicolon at the end and then we're going to say public int uh, player current health like that uh, so those are the two basic things we need and obviously when the when you first start your game you don't want your player to start out with zero health so straight away in the start function we're going to say our player current health is equal to player max health okay um so we'll obviously need when we have when we have a health system like this there's obviously certain things we need to be able to do we need to be able to take health off the player so that'll just be reducing the player's current health and we need something that will set the player's health to be maximum if we take any potions or something like that we might want to reset the player health we might want to give some a certain amount of health to the player either but we'll actually be able to use the same um thing that we use for hurting the player as we can use it for healing the player but we'll go into that in a little bit uh, and also we need to do something that will when the player's health gets to zero it'll kill the player or reset the player uh, and we already have something in our slime controller script so we'll open that up I have it open here already but uh, if we scroll down here we have this system that we're using for it sets the object to false and then we have it reloading after a certain amount of waiting time. So we could do all that again but that was kind of to demonstrate how that would work. What we're going to do for now uh, we're just going to make it so that it sets our player to not be active. Um, it won't respawn the player for us but we're going to add that in in just a little bit in, a, in an upcoming episode, upcoming episode even, uh, when we create a game manager that will control our whole game for us. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, obviously in our slime controller now this this script this bit of script stuff here is whenever the player gets whenever it touches the player it's immediately killing them so we're not going to want to use that anymore so the way to comment out this little bit of code that's not being used here we just do a slash star to make it all go gray and then after the little bit we don't want to use anymore we say star slash so that makes sure that these ones down here turn 
back to black so that we know that they're still being used but all the code here won't be run and this whole little section really won't actually do anything so we don't need to worry about that so we just want to save that to make sure that now we won't have a problem where back in our game here if we let it, if we go back in and just let it compile for a second and um, now when our player walks into our bad guys nothing will happen we won't have to worry about uh, the game resetting or anything like that if we just see there we go okay so we can still kill the enemies but the enemies can't kill us which is obviously what we want and um, okay so back in our health manager so now basically in our update function here all we want to say is uh, sorry no this is start function what, what, what am I doing here go down to our update function uh, what we want to say in here is if and then in brackets uh, the player current health is less than zero then inside our curly brackets here what we wanted to do is say game object which is whatever game object this script is attached to and we're going to attach this to our player game object dot set active false like that and what we will have eventually just as an example here we're going when once we make our game manager we'll put like an extra call in here to say it'll be like game manager uh, dot reload or respawn something like that that'll be it'll, we'll have something like that there that after the player has been uh, set to false then it'll uh, start uh, respawn the player back at let's the start point of some kind so that's but for the moment we just wanted to deactivate the player when our health runs out okay so as I said oh, we we'll just convert that uh, as I said um we'll need to be able to give uh, damage to the player so take away his health and we need to be able to reset his health back to maximum so the way we're going to do that is by creating two extra functions down here I'm just trying to remember have we covered um no I don't think we have had to use any extra functions yet so basically much like our update and our starting here they're automatically called by the computer but we're, what we're going to do is create a function that will be called by another script so the way we do that is just say public void uh, and we're going to say hurt player and then we put two normal brackets and then uh, our open and close curly brackets and basically what this will do is uh, what we can have now on our we'll, we'll, we're going to create an extra script for hurting the player but just as an example uh, on our slime controller what we could say is on our collision enter when it uh, when it hits an object with the name of the player like we had here we could say the other dot game object um, dot uh, player health manager uh, we could say dot hurt player so that'll call this little function here and it'll run whatever code is inside now obviously if we're going to be hurting our player we want him to be hurt by a certain amount so to, to decide what the amount that we're going to hurt the player is we put it inside these little these uh, brackets here we just say int um, because it's want to, going to be an int value because obviously we're going to say if we have 100 health and we want to take away 10 we want to take away an int from an int so we'll say int and we'll just call it uh, damage damage to give like that uh, and then in our function here all we have to say is take our player current health and then minus um, minus equals so that so what that means is we're taking our player and current health and we're minusing away whatever thing we put here next it's basically the same as saying if we were to say player current health is equal to our player current health minus what we just added here which is our damage to give so if we were to say that a shorter quicker way to write that basically is player current health minus equals damage to give like that so I'll just delete that first line it's the exact same thing it's just a shorter way to write it uh, basically but that's all we need to do so basically what will happen is when our slimes run into someone say if they want to give 10 damage it'll go okay hurt the player tell us that we want to do 10 damage and it'll say okay so we have a 10 damage that we want to take away from our 
current player health. So that's fine. Uh, and then we want to do one more function, like I said, which will be a public void. And this one we're going to call uh, set max health. And we put our brackets and our curly brackets. And this time we don't need to put anything into these brackets because we're not uh, going to be... We, we already know what our player max health is, so we don't need to be uh, given a value in. So here we can just say our player current health is equal to player max health. Like that. Perfect. Okay, and that's the basics of our health manager all kind of worked out. Uh, in the future, the only thing we need to change really is uh, controlling what our player max health is um, being pulled from. We should be pulled from whatever leveling up and uh, stat system we create in the future. Uh, so that's fine. So, like I said, back on our slime controller, we've removed all that. So now our, our slimes are no longer doing any damage to us. And we there's not really much point in just uh, writing into our slime controller script a uh, bit of code for hurting the player because we'll need all our enemies to be able to hurt the player in the future. So what we're going to do is create a new script, create a new C sharp script that we're going to call hurt player. Okay, and we'll just open that up again in Mono Develop over here, and it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, much like in our slime controller where we had on collision enter 2d actually we'll just copy and paste all of this so the whole uh, on collision enter 2d function here we're going to copy that go into our hard player and then below our update function so below the current the close bracket of update but above the final close bracket um, we're going to paste that in there we'll remove these uh, star slashes again uh, obviously, these whole little bits of line of code here don't apply anymore because we're not using them. Um, and our destroy other object, that doesn't apply because we don't want that. Um, and obviously, we don't want it automatically deactivating the player either. So we don't want that bit of code. So we'll remove all of that. But we do want to know whenever whatever has this script attached whenever that runs into anything that has uh, an object name of the player which should only be the player if there's something else named the player in our game then we're doing something wrong uh, but basically in here all we want to say is the other game object that we just ran into so other dot game object we're going to say dot get component there we go get component so what that will do is It'll say, okay, what the other object that we just walked into that has the name player, as we already checked, that other object, we're going to get a component that's attached to that, and we'll be attaching our player health manager. So the, we're going to say get component, and then a sharp bracket, and say um, player health manager, uh, and then some two normal brackets after that. And then within our player health manager, we're going to do dot hurt player and see as you can see that's basically what that's doing is it's finding the player health manager on that's attached to our player and then it's saying okay on that go into the heart player and then we're going to give it a certain amount of damage but to give it a certain amount of damage say here we could say uh, in a bracket we could just put 10 and then it would do 10 damage to the player but obviously we want to be able to decide how much damage we're giving the player because if we're going to use this script for multiple enemies we want it to be variable. So up above our start function here, we're going to say uh, public int, uh, let's just say damage to give. And then in our brackets here, instead of 10, we're going to say damage to give. Perfect. And then we put our semicolon at the end there. And we're going to save this. Uh, and sometimes we have to convert. Um, it's strange. Sometimes Unity does that. Sometimes I go through a batch of it always happening. There's a ways to fix it, and sometimes it will stay fixed, and sometimes it won't. Uh, Unity is a fickle beast sometimes. But now that that's compiled, what we will do is go to our player, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to add the component of the health manager. So the player health manager here. Uh, we want to set the player's max health, so we'll just set that to 50, like that. 
and then on our slimes at the moment they won't do any damage to us because we haven't attached the hurt player script to them but rather than going through now and adding her player script to each one of these, that's kind of a big waste of our time. So what we're going to do is delete, apart from this one slime red down here, who doesn't have a number after him, we're going to delete the other ones out of the game. And on this guy, we're going to add that script. So our heart player script like that. Uh, we're going to give him, say, we'll give him just 10 damage for now. That'll do fine. And now we're going to make him a prefab. So go back to our prefabs folder that we made before, drag our slime into there, and now we've got a default slime enemy. And now if we pop one there, pop another one here, we'll just pop a few back into the game. So now they all have the exact same settings. Uh, and the benefits of using prefabs is now, um, although we could have just delete them all and then just copy the same guy again now that they're prefab they're all linked together so if we take that original slime red or even one of the other ones it doesn't really matter too much um but if we go to the heart player script and we change their damage to say five you can see it turns into uh being bold and that means it's been applied a, a change has been made to a prefab and if you scroll back up here and you'll see a little option for prefab here if we hit apply now what that'll do is it'll stop me in bold and if we go look at the other slimes now they all have five applied to their damage but if we were to say just set it to 10 on this one and go look at the other ones they don't automatically get changed to 10 and then that you have to apply the change and then it will take effect on all of them so that's fine uh, so we should actually see if our system is working uh, just the way we want it to and if we hit play here If we walk around, we walk into someone, we should see, uh, we, if we actually just highlight the player here, we can see that our current health has gone down to 45. Oh, he just hit us, so our player, our health has gone down to 35 now because this is the one that had the 10. Uh, let's see if we can walk into someone else. We're, I'm actually going to disable my weapon so that we can just see the damage being happening. Scroll down again. So we're down to 25 now, keep walking into him. And we should see every time we walk into them now we're down to zero and our player uh, disappears um actually it disappeared when i got down less than zero. Oh yes because we said it to be if the player's health is less than zero it should be if the player current health in our player health manager in the update function if the player current health is less than or equal to zero so then if our player uh, gets to zero health then it immediately disappears unlike what happened last time so I'm just going to actually apply this so that they all do 10 damage again this time uh, once this finish compiling down here again let's apply this okay and we'll hit play oh didn't mean to walk in there uh, just turn off this weapon again uh, walk into these guys we scroll down to see our health manager. Now obviously, we'll eventually need to show this on screen so that the player knows how much health they have. But for the moment, uh, we're just sticking with uh, being able to track the numbers ourselves. And now we should see, there we go. We hit zero and immediately our player got dis disabled. And as you can see at the moment, we're not um, reloading the game just yet or anything like that. But we will as we go further into the series. So there you go. That's the basics of having a nice and simple little uh, health system in our game. Um, we're going to need to add uh, something similar to our enemies for when we attack them. And of course, we're going to need to start adding an animation for our player to attack our enemies too. And then we'll start getting into adding more stats and leveling up our enemy. And like I said, having a game manager, which will restart our player whenever he gets killed. So thanks for watching this episode. And I will be back soon with some more Unity RPG goodness. Goodbye. Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.